So let's, uh, let's go ahead and, and do that. I'm going to switch over to my, my demo environment here. So I have a um, server running, SQL Server 2014. I, I have a number of different services installed here in Management Studio. You can see my relational instance, and you can also see my analysis services instance. And you can see that when I installed this instance, I chose the tabular storage mode uh, because I have the little, the little uh, tabular model icon there. And you can see that I've installed analysis services in uh, tabular storage mode because of the, uh, the tabular uh, icon that we see there. So uh, you also see that I don't have any databases deployed currently. So I'm going to go out to my file system. And here you can see that I have a PowerPivot worksheet that I've authored with the Excel add-in. Now, I can either open up uh, Visual Studio to a tabular project and import that in the project, uh, or I could actually just right-click on this and bring it into the project. So let me, let me do that as demo number two. The first thing that I'm going to do is just right-click on databases, and I'm going to choose Restore from Power Pivot. And this brings up a familiar dialog if you've worked with analysis services in the past. This is the Restore dialog. And so this is actually treating a power pivot model as if it were a backup. So I'm going to um, I'm going to hit the Browse button here, and that will open up my Locate Database Files uh, dialog. Um, and if you've worked with analysis services uh, before, you, you also know this is kind of a unique um, experience that we, we don't have an open file dialog. You can't go browse to the file. It has to be in a trusted storage location unless you provide the path, which I've copied here. And I'm going to just paste that. I need, think I need to break that up into pieces, though. So let me go cut that. Let it assemble the file name. I think I could have pasted that right there. Yeah, that's what it does. It assembles that. And I'm going to give this a database name. And much like multidimensional, we still have the, the same convention of, how about if I just type it, sales model, have the same convention of a, an analysis services database. The database contains a model. That model contains tables. Um, and internally, a tool like Excel will see that as if it were a multidimensional model, and they'll say, oh, that database actually contains a cube, and that cube has measure groups. Those measure groups have measures, and, and uh, those tables will be treated as dimensions. And so we have a complete parity between the two different platforms here. So you can see that we're now restoring that model. And momentarily, we should see this dialog close. And um, then we'll see that the, the database opens. Hmm. Ask a good question here, Jim. So what's the difference <laughs> between the tabular model in Excel and the tabular model in Visual Studio? Ooh, that's a, that's a good question. Um, so um, d depending on how I choose to answer the question, so internally it's the same thing. So uh, it... it uh, Power Pivot really is tabular uh, that lives inside of an Excel workbook. Um, however, tabular SSAS supports more features such as partitioning, role-based security, uh, perspectives um, that just aren't turned on in Power Pivot. So okay. easy answer, same thing. More complex answer is that Power Pivot is a subset of, of Tabular. And how about my audience? If I develop it in Excel versus a tabular model and I want to send it to the enterprise? Uh, well, in Excel, it's, it's just available on the desktop unless I publish it to SharePoint. So if I have SharePoint with uh, the appropriate um, enterprise, with all of the appropriate integrations, then it can be published to SharePoint. Uh, and interestingly, that actually publishes it to a tabular uh, instance of analysis services called Power Pivot. Mm -hmm. um, and then we have the whole Power BI story. So you can use uh, SharePoint Online using your Office 365 uh, enterprise tenant, right, right. Um, which is really the same model as SharePoint On-Prem. And, and then we have the new Power BI um, designer, which, which is really kind of a simplified and streamlined version of the same thing. Okay. 
So um, here you can see that I have my sales model uh, database deployed, and uh, you see uh, some familiar things like connections, but we don't see uh, cubes and, and dimensions and measure groups. We see tables and, and roles. Um, so uh, this is just the way that Management Studio is translating this metadata, but if I were to point Excel at this, I, I, I would see some very familiar things that uh, I'd be used to seeing in multidimensional. Let's go ahead and... and uh, and uh, get this into a project now. So I'm going to go ahead and right click on my workbook file and I'm going to open this with I'm used to having the open with option here. Why don't I have that? Uh, you know what? I'm going to switch gears. I'm going to open up Visual Studio. My, my plan here was to right click and say open with Visual Studio 2013, but we can pull it rather than push it. So I'm going to say I want a new project. And when I create this project, you'll see the BI templates come up here in SQL Server Data Tools for BI. And I'm going to choose uh, import from Power Pivot. We'll go ahead and just take the default project names just to keep this nice and quick and this will prompt me now for my power pivot model now let me explain what we're seeing here real quickly we actually will connect to a live analysis services instance in tabular mode and we're actually going to be working against that instance this is a big difference between the tabular modeling experience and the uh, multi-dimensional experience. Go to projects, go ahead and pick up that model. So, and this is just evidence that, that Power Pivot and Tabular really are based on the same metadata. In, internally, it's the same stuff. They're the same objects that are managed in tables. We have measures and tables that have attributes and columns and, and uh, some, some very simple concepts. One thing that I really do like about Tabular is that as I'm sitting down with business users, I don't have to explain what a measure group is and what a hierarchy and a level and what an attribute is. Um, even though for you know those of us who have been working around that technology for a long time, you know those are simple things that we understand. But sitting down with a business user and explaining the difference between a hierarchy, a level, and and a member can be kind of a confusing concept. And uh, in Tabular, uh, most client tools abstract that away, and 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 users deal with concepts like tables and fields. Do you also find that the clients don't have to wait quite as long for the development of their cube? Yeah, generally yeah. speaking, yeah. of course, uh, you would need to have a, a skilled developer who, who understands uh, what they're doing. But generally, yes, the, yeah. the, the time to market for a tabular model um, is much, much shorter than it yes, is with yeah. multidimensional. So here is the model open here in the designer. As you can see, we just have a simple model. We have one file. It's a model.bim file. And it's an XML document. It's a big XML document. And it defines all of my tables, defines all of my measures, my relationships, everything. And at this point, um, I, I'll go over to Management Studio and just point out that as soon as I open that model, magic things happen. It actually creates this model, and uh, it, it gives it a, uh, a very cryptic name. So it uses my project name, it uses my name, then it adds a GUID at the end to make it unique. So if I had multiple developers working on this, theoretically that would be a unique name. So this is my workspace database. And uh, if I were working on a very large model that, that let's say, uh, fact tables had billions and billions of rows, I would want to partition this, and in my workspace, uh, I would just have a subset of all of my data so my workspace wasn't so big. But then when I deploy this out to my production server and process all of those partitions, then, then it would have all of the data in it. Now, if I go to deploy this, let's take a quick look at the properties of the project. You can see that it assumed that I wanted to use the same server uh, for deployment. Uh, but I could use my configuration manager and have a, a development server target, a Q&A or QA target, and a production target, and have different servers here. I'm also going to change my processing option. 
uh, to do not process so I can actually manage processing on the server. And the first thing that I'll want to do before I deploy this out to the server is I'll want to go up to my connections and I'll want to adjust that connection. Here I just uh, have a sample that uses an access database, but if you're using uh, SQL Server or other uh, connections, then we would want to make sure that those are correct. And then we can go ahead and choose deploy. This should be a, a pretty quick deployment since I'm not actually processing during my deployment. Warns me and says it's going to run some script. And uh, this is just a metadata deployment, so it's just going to push the objects out to the server. And that should just take a few seconds to get that out to the server. And that's done. You can see it says metadata deployed. We'll go out and refresh. And there's our actual model. And now I could, um, I could go script partitions. I could go add roles. I could make, change my connections. And then I could process it here on the server. Mm -hmm. All right, well, that concludes my demo. So let me switch back to my slides. So in summary, um, Visual Studio, and, and this was actually true when, uh, when we were in preview. So uh, I need to, to make a correction here. So Visual Studio, the Visual Studio shell, Visual Studio 2012 shell, is installed with the SQL Server 2014 client tools. But if you would like to use a newer version of Visual Studio or another edition of Visual Studio, then you'll want to download the SSDT for database projects and then SSDT for BI, for BI projects add-in uh, for the specific version of Visual Studio that you're using. Uh, SSAS multidimensional and tabular models have unique capabilities and many features in common. But uh, it's hard to do a side-by-side -side comparison, as we've already discussed. It, it really, mm -hmm. really does depend. And so you, you would want to do your homework first, since if you go down one road and choose to switch over to the other, you go down tabular and say, oh, no, we, we're going to go multidimensional. There's no real bridge there. There, there isn't. So yeah. there, there, is a, there is a backing up of the bus exercise that, that needs to go yes. on at that yeah. point. Yeah. I, I think the good news is that the tabular is generally fairly easy to design. Mm -hmm. And so if, if you've, you know, let's say that you went down the road of multidimensional and then you decide, well, no, let's go ahead and test out tabular. Um, th that's usually a, a not the time consuming part of that project. Yeah. 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 And, but it does depend. And a lot of that depends on skill set. And who's going sure, to support sure. it and who's going to maintain that solution down the road? And if you haven't used Tabular yet, test the water. Use it on something simple and, and you know, invest a little bit before you jump head first and get yourself in trouble. Yeah. Um, so, uh, again, you can convert an Excel Power Pivot model uh, to an SSDT a BI Tabular project. You can either go directly to the server. You can also bring that model from the server into an SSDT for BI Tabular project directly from the server. So if you deployed from Excel to the server, you could pull it back into a project. And you'll want to have it in a project. You, you really want to manage it in a project because, you know, some business user is going to say, hey, can you add this? Can you add this measure? Can you add this attribute or whatnot? Requirements always change and evolve. And of course, that's done in your development environment. Um, and uh, so I, I don't see Excel as the primary development environment for Tabular, but it is a, it is a good first step. So uh, a number of good references that uh, I'll point you to. There's a lot of good uh, resources out there, a lot of good information for both multidimensional and Tabular on this slide. And with that, I'll uh, thank you for your time. Appreciate your presentation, well, Jim. Very, thank and, you. And uh, thank you for joining us.